I've been asked a lot to do a video about me, what makes me tick, what's the history, that kind of thing. And I thought now was the appropriate time to do so. I didn't start the way you think. I didn't have an apprenticeship or anything like that or any formal training whatsoever. I taught myself. It wasn't until my school days were well behind me that I found out I had some learning difficulties, dyspraxia, dyslexia. In, in a way, it means basically what makes sense of my brain. By the time it comes out here, it doesn't make sense. And, and that, that can ha happen in all sorts of different ways. Funny though, I was talking to an old school friend recently and um, she said to me, the only lesson at school that kept my attention was CDT craft design technology basically woodworking lessons i probably spent most of my time fucking about with uh, the yankee screwdrivers i'm sure you remember those if you're anywhere near my age i think they got banned <laughs> um later on but nonetheless i was a nightmare for teachers uh, um my parents i pretty much asked to leave every damn school and college i went to being a perfectionist pretty much made my life hell and has it's always been a pain being a perfectionist because you can't achieve perfection no matter how much you strive for it it interferes with so many different things in your life creativity though runs deep in my blood it comes from both sides of my family i've got to be in art and a few distinctions at college but you know that didn't amount to much so yeah i can paint and draw too but i find it too frustrating to do painting and drawing because every line you make and if it's just not if it's a, you know just a hair off it's not per perfect woodworking no perfection isn't achievable you can get close and it's actually teaching me a life lesson of how to um, you know cope with being perfectionist and not you know trying to get outside of my comfort zone being a perfectionist in woodworking isn't achievable. There's always going to be something that goes wrong and you're going to have to fix it and you'll always know that that mistake is there. But if you're really good at it, no one else is going to know it's there unless you point it out to them. Or if you're really good, you can point it out to them and they'll say, I can't see what you're talking about. A huge part of making furniture well is being able to hide your mistakes. I don't know if you've ever um, looked closely at some chipping out furniture. <laughs> But how do I put it? I can safely say I wouldn't say they're very well made. I would say they're badly made. Fast forward to my late 20s, early 30s. I went on a film shoot with my dad. Get in, it's back country. At the time, he was the creative director at JWT, a big ad agency. He was responsible for big campaigns like the Maureen Lipman BT ad. You might remember if you're an 80s kid. Yorkie Bar, it's not for girls. The Oxo family, lots of big campaigns, basically. Anyway, this was a shell ad with Michael Schumacher, F1 Ferrari and a Ferrari F40, I think it was, that was involved. I think the strap line was a new wave in petrol. I digress, that's where I got my taste for the film world. I'm, I'm obviously, obviously a big film buff, loving all the greats like Kubrick, Scott and the likes. I went at a base level art department runner from there really. I just loved the fantasy of it all. I later art directed working around the world from the big budget to the micro. That's where my eye for editing and framing shots comes from. Working on films and adverts, there was always props needed and you often get let down and man, you need something on set right now. I was always the guy that would go off and make it and it was, it was always said he's well handy to have around i have a mind where i find problem solving easy i always took everything apart as a child to see how it worked i remember making a cannon that fired dry t-shirts that weighed sod all with the same guy who made crocodile dundee's knife in sydney australia they were fun times that's for sure 48 hours of solid work and drinking at the same time it was all good fun long story short the film world i'm just not that type of fella you have to be some sort of showman a personality click your fingers and everything happens for you that type johnny big bollocks i hated rap parties if there's any party to go to and make you feel inadequate that's the party to go to however many grams of charlie you have you still feel like a little man uh, and often people in that circle will want to belittle you it was just uh, you just felt like you'd been back at school again kind of thing I, I didn't i didn't gel to it anyhow 16 plus hour days seven days a week was a killer and man getting a gig was too was tough too i pretty much had to follow the work around the world until i was about 32 because not much was being shot in the uk because it's so expensive if thing was being shot in south africa new zealand australia um and eventually my visa after 32 i couldn't really get i couldn't get a work permit really so I had to move back to the UK and I took over my mum from her interior design job from being responsible for housing flats based in central London, like posh areas. 
And I was um, basically supposedly in charge of making them look nice, etc. You know, they were um, long term and short term led. So all the soft furnishings, everything about that flat, the pictures on the wall, that'd be me having to put it all together and make it look nice. But the seats, as usual, above, just dictated what they wanted to see and done anyway. So I was just the gimp, really. But it was good, really, and not a bad thing, because it gave me time to learn more. I think it, the first thing that got me into tools was hundreds of stools needed to be reupholstered. So I YouTube how to upholster. That's where I, where it all started, I think, really. Then the next thing I was making, headboards, then built-in wardrobes and so on. The bug grasped me by the family jewels to make furniture, not to mention the pull of the power tools was strong and the pleasure of hand tools was like a posh wank. If there's two pieces of advice I can give you, I have suffered listening to so much content that made no sense to me over the years, just like it was being at school. Same goes for Facebook groups. Really take caution there. Peeps advise and say any old sh** they have read thinking it's gospel and have never tried it. I mean, it's that bad. I've moved away from commenting on Facebook because the less educated can't see the wood for the trees when they're given advice. They go all Karen and Kevin on us. If you're learning from the school of YouTube and the web, don't be a dumbass and think the person is a god that you watched. I don't know, I'm not gonna say any names, but there's plenty of them out there that, that have a massive following that just think that one person can do everything and is perfect at it. And they'll be in a group that have never even tried anything that person's done and they'll be saying this is how you do it this is how you show up on that play nine <laughs> and, and so so on and so forth don't be that guy sit back read take it all in watch lots of different people on youtube and, and then get in the workshop and do it yourself before you give anyone else's your opinion you are an individual you're you'll naturally work differently to the next person so listen to lots of people taking what they have to say into practice all said and done find the way that works for you don't get pissed off when you can't sort straight. What you've been told to do may not be what works for you. So try another way. If you're like me and have dismantled everything you ever saw as a child and never put back, by the way, and pissed your parents off as a kid, you're going to work it out quickly. There's peeps online that were born teachers. There's sh sh load more that aren't and sh keep their mouths shut. And yet, you probably call them gods too. You will then discover what works for you. It's key to this. To my super fans, Derek Hansen, Mark Dana, Jimmy Frick, Peter Davidoff, and Justin Walsh. Thank you! The other thing I learned that changed everything for me was when a master craftsman, I mean, really knowledgeable fella, and he said to me, measuring is often where it goes wrong. I didn't need to think about it, that statement, but f me, it was like walking the water moment of feeling free. I'm going to leave that for you to work out, not because I'm a dick, because I want you to feel that same feeling of revelation that I did. And no, it's no not about reading a ruler right. It's not about marking measurements of 69 and 96. Both look the same, ruler flip, huge different. Think about it. Relative measurements are key to looking like you have reached perfection. Trying to reach perfection, measuring everything, leads to pulling your hair out and firewood. I'm going to quickly talk about designing while I look for a ladder tall enough to get me down off this soap stool. There's no secret to it. Um, trawl the internet, see aspects of furniture you like, and take a screenshot, download the picture, and start making a file. And then put it all together in a pot, stir it up, and see what the drawing looks like. You don't have to be brilliant at drawing to see if a design is going to work or not. And to be honest with you, if you haven't got an artistic eye, you could end up with something really interesting. And some people might laugh, or you might, you know, smash it out of the park and it all looks wonderful. Not everyone can or should even try designing. Some are, some are just really good at making stuff, but are shit designers. That being said, really, though, there's no money making your own designs to start with. They may not be in the future, too. Peeps won't spend unless you're a known brand name. I'm a failure at that. So I'm here, my pedigree chums, trying to make that name for myself so much so my furniture sells. Is a great example of a screw up that I need to fix. I don't know why I didn't think of that before I put it together, but you can see that bare wood through the uh, perspex. Now I shot brad nails through this frame to hold in the, let's call it the bronze ward backing. So I needed to somehow get through those and get that backing out. I couldn't take the perspex out now because it is literally framed. <laughs> 
quite literally I could, you know it's glued in that frame so i need to somehow bleed in some indian ink down the back of it and hope it hides the um, wood showing through anyway back to the program you're probably wondering as i literally did spend years just watching nothing but youtube woodworking videos god for at least five years just nothing else interested me of course when the girlfriend came home yeah i couldn't be watching that but you're probably wondering who who was i watching all the time and i can honestly say i can't tell you i can remember the wood whisperer um he was definitely a staple diet of mine but it was always irritating because he'd be so long-winded about explaining everything and always spoke in inches um and over explained things but I, I would just watch everyone and everything that i could possibly watch and made my own decisions funny enough i just looked on youtube now to see if if i typed in woodworking if any of them came up not a single one of them came up in in the um search there's a lot of crap came up that i mean honestly don't really have much to do with woodworking and clickbait and it's, it's a different world on youtube now unfortunately there's lots of, in my eyes there's lots of youtube channels that should really be doing their thing more i mean there's a guy that there's one channel called the joinery workshop man th this guy's seriously knowledgeable i mean he's, he's more of a, a carpenter sense um maker i mean he you know elaborate staircases perfectly built and everything very different from me making a chair or a dining table which i wish i could watch more of but he, of, he doesn't put out a great deal of content and there's other guys like that just get so um put off from you know it's like what's the point of making these videos when nobody sees them and you see these videos and they've only got like 400 views and stuff and there's a couple of other guys i follow and they're hardly ever uh, tony's works wood i think is another one he's a very knowledgeable fella but um there, there there isn't enough of that on youtube as far as i'm concerned there's a lot of bollocks a lot of crap and if i see another person make a sword or a knife or wearing hot pants and another clickbait crap video saying i made forty-five thousand pounds on this table i don't really watch woodworking videos anymore i watch friends of mine channels and people i've mentioned so far but i came across probably a couple of years ago a chap called matt esler all of the years i've watched people on youtube i say he's in my opinion the best teaching style he explains things in a way that certainly somebody like me that's got learning disorders that um, needs to have something explained in a way that makes me go yep gotcha he's the man um he's the only man i can think of that i would, I would say you should go and check out you know in a teaching perspective if some guy the guy's a trained teacher that's someone you should go to someone who's not a trained teacher who teaches you take everything with a pinch of salt and see if it works for you if it doesn't okay it doesn't matter but um I, I think there's a lot to be said to being taught by teachers that being said there's still lots of interesting woodworking channels out there that entertaining and stuff those brad now should have been shot in the center to, towards the center of that panel so they panel could expand and contract evenly but that panel had uh, twisted a bit so those corners that i put the brads in were the corners that were higher up than they should be the other corners were sitting nice and seated properly you know so i pushed the raised corners up and shot a brad into each of those corners to bring the panel down and i didn't use anything else to hold that panel in it should be fine it's such a small panel that wood movement is going to be so slight it's got a millimeter and a half each side to expand and contract anyway it's only fixed in one point either end so i'm confident it should be fine who would have thought it would have taken three years to build a 10k community i, I never thought i was going to get there sometimes i mean some people never get there and i see them slogging out videos week after week so it makes me feel very humble to reach 10,000 followers. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for sticking with me, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff, comments. And I'd like to thank Nanny and Danky because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. So cheers. Bottoms up. Smash a virtual chin chin for me, sod the sailors. And we'll see you in 100k time with a bit of luck. Please rise. Now sit on it. The fawns be with you. And also with you. Let us A. A.